Oh, all right, guys. So this is the latest and greatest from uh, Nanlux. Oh, sorry, I mean. Nan Lite, this is the Forza 720B. Okay, all jokes aside, this actually should be part of the Nan Lux range, and I'll let you know exactly why. How's it going guys, my name is Andrew Murphy from Down Under in Gold Coast, Australia. So I know I'm a bit late to the party, but I also have been able to actually use the Forza 720B uh, on a few actual shoots, so I can try to figure out the good and the bad bits about it. But spoiler, it's pretty freaking good. Now firstly, let's just go through the specs. So the Nanlite Forza 720B is a 800 watt bicolored COB Bowens mount light, which is currently the brightest LED bicolored spotlight in the world. It has a CCT range of 2700 to 6500 Kelvin, a CRI of 96 and a TLCI of 97. Now the 720B is 40% brighter than the Forza 500 at 5600 Kelvin, or if you opt for the Forza 720 daylight model, it is 70% brighter than the Forza 500. It can be powered via AC or V-Lock Batteries can be controlled via 2.4 gigahertz Bluetooth or DMX, and it has a completely redesigned ballast that honestly looks like it should be part of the Nanlux family. And honestly, if this is the new standard for all Nanlite fixtures moving forward, man, I am so excited to see what they come up with next. Now, firstly, before we actually get into all the brightness readouts and stuff, if you want to skip to that, I'll leave some timestamps down below so you can do that. But let's just talk about this redesigned ballast because this thing is just insanely good and it's completely changed the way I've seen Nanlite products, I guess, like moving forward. So the redesigned ballast is uh, mostly a full metal design, apart from a few bits like the V-mount plates and I will see the screen and stuff. And if you've owned any of the previous Forza series lights like the 200, 300 or 500, you know there were a few key issues with these lights that they've solved with this new ballast. So one of the main issues of this old design, this is the Forza 300B ballast, uh, was this power brick inside the back situation and the batteries inside of the back, if it was mounted onto a stand, it was like really awkward to access all these components to change out batteries and whatnot. But now everything is much easier to access with the V-mount plates actually being on the side of the ballast and the controls being on the front rather than the top. And then obviously all your connectors and stuff, oh God, Odie's hair all over me. All the connectors and stuff are on the top. Obviously that's where the cables are gonna be coming from. So it just makes a lot more sense the way they've designed this one. Plus I've upgraded the main connector that goes from the ballast to the actual head itself to this huge chunky, what looks like a weather resistant one. Honestly, when I first got this, I thought it was the same uh, actual power cable that I've got with my Nanlux Evoke 1200 because it's like huge, but it's basically like a slimmed down version of that. But like, honestly, like this and the ballast, the redesign, just like the strength and stuff, this is why I think it should be part of the Nanlux family. Like it just resembles everything about the Nanlux Evoke 1200. It's just it's crazy. And let's not forget this old mounting clamp that I never broke, but I know a ton of people in the community were always breaking these using them on set. So basically, uh, Nanlite has taken inspiration from uh, this as a Kupo one that you can get as a replacement for this for the old school Forza ones. They seem to have taken inspiration from this and they've made their own super clamp, but they've also adjusted the way the ballast attaches as well. So this is like a push lock system, which just slips in and just works really good. Now when running this light off V-Log batteries, you will have some limitations. So you can run the Forza 720 and 720B off both 14.8 and 26 volt V-Log batteries, which honestly is just absolutely amazing. But you will be limited to 40% of the output when you're running 14.8 volt batteries, and then you will be limited to 70% output on the 720 and 65% output on the 720B when you're running 26 volt batteries. Now one feature that I am actually a huge fan of is that you can actually hot swap the batteries, kind of. So you can't just yank the batteries off like mid use, but if you dim it to 0%, you can then actually take one of the VLOX off and put a new one back on without the unit powering off. It just gives you like a little warning saying to obviously like add another battery back on, but you can do that without powering the unit off. Now onto the head, again, this has a new mounting design and it's just so much better. The overall head design is very familiar if you have used any of the other Forza range of lights. It's basically the same uh, width and height, just a little bit longer, obviously, to account for all the extra cooling that they need. And yes, it does have a protective glass element in front of the COB chip as well. The redesigned head mount features a new locking system which removes that tooth system like on the Forza 300B, so you can now actually mount it at any angle you want. 
And by far my favorite part is that they have this baby pin junior pin combo speaker on the bottom, which it looks like they've taken from the new projector lens. So for example, if you only have C stands or normal stands, you can use the baby pin with the screw. But then if you have a stand that can accept a junior pin like my uh, Kupo master combo stand, then you can actually accept a use a junior pin as well. You just have to remove the screw and then it slots into the stand. And I actually love that. This is just a super clever design. Now I recently used this on a shoot with my mate Luke and it performed absolutely amazing. We used it on AC power for most of it and the output was pretty impressive even compared to my Nanlux Evoke 1200. So the main scenes we actually used it for was inside the house and I actually shot it into a five in one reflector on a silver side and just basically made it like a giant light source. So it's, I guess it's kind of like a half book lighting where you shine it into something and then shine it back and then diffuse it. But we just had like, we just needed something, I guess a big source, like a window, and this worked great. We also used the outdoors to directly compete with the sun. Basically we had a scene where we had someone walking in and talking outside a car, and then we had someone inside the car as well, but everything inside the car was basically underexposed. So we got the Forza 720B with the Fresnel attachment, and then basically shot it on the person inside the car, just to lift up the levels. I can't actually show you the footage because the commercial isn't actually released yet, but that actually worked really good as well. Now in terms of output, if you've only ever used a Forza 300 or even a Forza 500, as your most powerful light, you'll actually be blown away by the output of this thing, especially combined with a Fresnel lens or the projector attachment as well. So in this setup, I've placed the light outside about four and a half meters away with just the included reflector. And this is the output compared to just like an overcast midday light. Oh, and also as well, while we're on the topic, the uh, Forza head lead is five meters and the power lead is four and a half meters. So you almost get 10 meters of lead length, I guess. Uh, which means that you shouldn't really run into any issues either booming it up or having it like spread out sort of thing. Then all I did was add the diffusion from a five and run reflector on the window just to soften the light a bit and that's the results here. Now if you've never used powerful lights before, the main benefit is that you can basically move them further away from your subject, usually outside, which makes the light look just like so much more natural. And the main thing that I usually struggle with is making lighting look natural when using lowered power lights. Like in these shots before that you can see the lights basically hitting myself, but it's also creating these patterns on the back wall as well, basically shining through just like a fly screen on the uh, actual door. And if you look at most feature films and stuff a lot of the lighting happens from outside and then they bring in like little kickers and stuff just to add pops of light where they need it. If you're a bi-colored light user then you may already own the Forza 300B so the 720B will obviously be like the next step up since there's nothing in between at the moment. So what is the actual difference between the Forza 300B and the Forza 720B? So again, I set up the Forza 300B, which is about four and a half meters away. And I shot it direct at me with the reflector and also with some diffusion as well. Now in terms of lighting control on the light itself, you'll absolutely love that the 720B now has 0.1% increments rather than full percents, especially if you're coming from the Forza 300B, which just has full percent increments. Basically like when you're trying to fine tune exposure readings, you just have so much more control over the light. Especially if you are gonna use this like in close proximity to a subject, you really need those 0.1% increments. Right, yeah, so this is fan on. This is one meter away from the camera. And then you can turn the fan off altogether, but you will be limited to 15% output, which is about 120 watts. Now, one thing that I thought was actually really clever is that you have a USB port here for actually upgrading the firmware and whatnot. But if you're using say like a DMX receiver, this can actually also output power as well. So you can run power from this to your DMX receiver instead of having to have some other option of like powering it on this unit. In terms of effects and whatnot, the Forza 720B comes with the usual ones that all the Nanlite product comes with, and it works directly with the Nanlink app as well via Bluetooth. However, more recently on my shoots, I've been actually opting for the Nanlink uh, wireless transmitter box, mainly because like Bluetooth is good, but there's just not that much range compared to using 2.4 gigahertz. And obviously if we got lights all over the place and I've got some older lights as well that don't actually don't have Bluetooth built in, I have to use this unit anyway. And I've just found that this seems to be a better option if you need to transmit a signal over a larger distance. This is the bag side by side between the Forza 300B and the Forza 720B. Now one thing I do wish that Nanlite actually added was wheels to the bag because it is a decent weight and it would have been nice to just be able to wheel it around rather than actually having to carry it around on set. All right, so in summary, who do I actually think this is for? So 
if you own a Forza 300B and you want to stick to bicolored lights, obviously like there's no other light currently that you can get, but this is an absolutely amazing light if you want to stick with that bicolored system. Like just hands down, just go for this one rather than waiting for something to come in between. But also as well, if you own a Forza 500, because this is a much older light, upgrading to say the Forza 720 daylight version, you'll get 70% increase in output, but also all the new upgrades and features as well, like the new ballast, the new head design, and also having Bluetooth so you connect directly to the app. Anyway guys, if you did enjoy this one, then consider liking and subscribing to the channel. If you wanna find out any more about the Forza 720 or the Forza 720B, I'll leave some links down below. Otherwise, stay creative and just be you. Have fun.